Hey guys. Uh... Uh, hey guys, uh, hopefully you can hear me at the back. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about highly available foreman. Uh, there's a lot of decisions you have to make, a lot of choices. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to go away and build up some cluster yourself in the future. Uh, so this is originally what we're kind of working off. So uh, right at the top there, you've got uh, I've got a PostgreSQL post SQL, SQL database. Uh, you could obviously use MySQL or something else. Um, you, I'm not going to cover a kind of clustering S SQL. Um, the Postgres guys had a really good talk about replication yesterday. If you didn't see it, look at the recording. It's really good. Uh, so then you're going to have your load balancers because you've got a cluster of databases hopefully there. You're going to have your formal applications there. That will scale up quite well. Uh, my diagram has three. Yours might have four, five, whatever. Uh, you have load balancers there. Just underneath, that's uh, everything that wants to talk to the formal application will go via the load balancers. So you can see my laptop there. And the smart proxies also would go via the low balancers into the former uh, and low balancers uh, to the applications. And then down the bottom, you've got, I've got two separate smart proxy clusters. Uh, my laptop, I've only actually got one set up and ready to go because it's a laptop. Uh, but you could, you could set up more. Uh, and then underneath the low balancers, underneath the smart proxies, you have low balancers. Uh, and the blue things down there, they are meant to be clients. And they would connect into the smart proxies. So. so the formal application. So each node, obviously, you're going to have the same SSL certs. Uh, if you've got different SSL certs on each node, you're going to have issues uh, if you go via load balancer. And one day, one day you get one, the next day you get another. Let's, let's keep them all kind of configured in the same way, the same certs. Use DNS alt names. So you might have your node one, your node two, your node three, and then your, uh, your name that you might be foreman.example.com or whatever it is, you're going to sign them make sure all names are signed so you can test firstly connect to, but you're all going to forcefully connect to one single node or you can connect to any. Um, there's a little file there as well, um, encryptionkey.rb. Not many people might know about this, but this is used to encrypt uh, passwords in the database. So each node needs to have the same uh, key in there or whichever one writes, writes into the database is going to be able to read the other nodes, so keep them all the same. Uh, there's also uh, Another directory, a file there, uh, local secret token. That's used for signing cookies. So if, if you've got one session open uh, and then a server goes down and then you suddenly get redirected to the next server, because uh, the cookies are all valid for the users. Uh, there's also some settings. So a uh, form and URL is normally used in the provisioning templates. That's uh, for the clients to connect back to the new back to Foreman to say, okay, we're built, or there's a couple of other uses as well. That needs to obviously go by the load balancer. That defaults to the FQDN um, of, the, of the first node that uh, sees the database. So you're going to have to change that manually afterwards. Uh, unattended URL, uh, similar sort of thing. Uh, actually, I think unattended URL is used in templates. Uh, Foreman URL, I can't remember, but change it. Um, Foreman memcache plugin. Uh, so we've got a plugin that will connect to Memcache, uh, store user, se user sessions, very similar to the uh, for the local secret token for the cookies. Uh, when one server goes down, you obviously want to be able to your users that to be kind of transparent to your users. So when one server goes down, you connect to the next one, and the users have just no idea. Uh, again, it can scale horizontally. So uh, go back. We can have three, four, five, ten. Uh, don't go crazy. Uh, you know, no need to go crazy, hopefully. Uh, also, you could use the same same principles as well, not just from scaling for HA, uh, scaling just for scale, because uh, you want to have multiple nodes. Uh, you don't maybe not even care about availability, but you just have a bit larger state. So the smart proxies. Uh, each node has to have the same SSL certificates, again, for the same reasons. Uh, so there's, there's two sets of certificates here. So uh, form and proxy is, is, the, is the service that the formal applications will connect to the proxy to do stuff like uh, create DHCP releases. Uh, there's a couple of other things as well. Uh, connect to pup, get data out puppets. Foreman needs to uh, trust. Uh, Foreman needs to trust those certs. So, if on the Foreman servers, they're obviously going to be using the same certs or come from a, maybe a CA. Uh, you're going to generate those certs, obviously using DNS alt names. So you can see there. Uh, the first one I've got central seven Foreman smart proxy. That's that's my name for my pro, smart, smart proxy cluster. 
Uh, I've got DNS alt-mains, uh, it's got number one and number two on them as well. So, there. So I can always just make sure I'm hitting one if I want to test. Puppet. So, again, each node uses the same SSL certificates. Uh, generally, you would uh, generate these, let, let Puppet generate these as part of the installer. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Obviously, your Puppet modules, they need to be very the same on both nodes, or, or three or four, whatever nodes they are. Um, if, if you've got different nodes on, or different versions of the Puppet modules on, on different nodes, uh, when your clients are going to get different things back, potentially, whichever node they hit, it's going to be bad. Um, let's make sure that that's all, all good. So uh, R10K is a really good tool for that. Uh, I haven't set up R10K on my laptop. Uh, I've just, as a demo, I've just installed one module. That uh, should work. Uh, again, you've got an option as well for SRV records. Uh, so the Puppet agent uh, in the Puppet config file, you can set, up, set uh, which is the Puppet master. Uh, I've set that to uh, my smart proxy, the load balancing address. Uh, you can set that to use SRV records. So you could change that dynamically uh, quite easily without going around to your machines. Multiple. You might have hundreds of machines and you don't want to change that manually because normally obviously you do that by Puppet, but if Puppet isn't working because your masters are down, uh, Going to have a bit of an issue. Uh, SRV records are a really good way to go as well. Puppet CA. So um, my first question is like, do you really need uh, kind of high availability with Puppet CA? So when the Puppet CA is down, all you the only thing you can't do is sign is, is deploy new nodes. So sign certs. So that's probably not an issue. Uh, hopefully, it might be an issue. Um, but let's keep things simple if you can. So. Maybe just have one node as your CA, and in your Puppet Conf, you can you can say this one node is, is my CA server, uh, but use the load balancing address, which can go to either of those two uh, for, the, for the master, for the, the catalog. Sorry. Uh, a couple of thoughts I've had about if you want to have um, highly available Puppet CA, so just mirroring uh, etc Puppet Labs Puppet SSL, just mirroring that directory uh, between the two certs, between two servers, having the Puppet CA service enabled, um, should work as well. Um, you can use cron, you can use rsync, uh, inotify, um, and I think GFS2 would probably quite work quite well here. Um, like, you know, the certs are small, but they won't change very often depending on how, how kind of often you deploy notes. Um, there's a couple of options, obviously you can use shared storage, um, I really don't like shared storage um, because you just move the problem away from the application to somewhere else. Um, yeah, you can have highly available storage, but uh, just, just avoid it, keep things simple if you can. Um, again, you can use SRV records, so if you've got a Puppet CA server set to uh, uh, smartproxy1.example.com, you, you lose that server and you want to point it to two, uh, so you have your certs and you put them on, on two, uh, and you want to point it to two, you can just change SRV records, and uh, again, you just don't have to go around to multiple machines all the time. Uh, that's just going to be a massive pain in the ass, like I said. So, a couple of lessons learned about uh, my experience doing this. So, uh, kind of a, this, a lot of these actually apply to um, any kind of highly available system. You use configuration management for that system. Uh, if you've got kind of multiple formal, apply, formal application nodes, uh, doing having to change something manually on one, two, and then three, you're not going to do it. You forget it's error prone. Uh, use config management, whatever you want to use, I don't care. Uh, I use Ansible. Um, don't terminate SSL on the load balancers. Um, I think this is probably possible. Uh, it was quite, I think it's really complicated. Uh, Foreman uh, has some really good documentation, uh, but there isn't that much about terminating SSL um, outside of Foreman. Um, but you probably could. Uh, I just kept things simple, but tried to anyway. Um, so I don't know how much you guys know about Rails, uh, but Part of um, the installer form when it runs uh, rake uh, db seed and db uh, migrate. Uh, these migrate the databases or just put data on the database. You don't need to run this uh, on every single of the three nodes or, or however many you have. Uh, you only need to run it, on, run it on one. So don't don't need, don't need to run it on one. Just 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 one. So set, 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 that, set that flag to false on the installer. Uh, you can you can easily. Uh, 
so if you have lots of plugins, for example, it can take a long time. Um, if you're using the packages, I think the, the RPM packages and then the Debian packages, they run DB rake and, and oh, yeah, DVCs and, and DB migrates. So um, I think we should probably change that, but um, for now that's kind of a bit of an issue. But um, hopefully, depending on your, your, your size of your, your, your how long that takes, it might not be too much of an issue. Um, clear tasks kind of frequently and often. So uh, again, it kind of relates to scale. Not necessarily HA, um, but all the tasks, uh, if you're using Foreman tasks anyway, um, is stored in the database. Uh, they don't get deleted, I don't think, by default. So I added a cron job in there just to leave after 30 days. Um, if you have a massive, data, massive, massive table full of like, millions of tasks that you don't ever look at, it's unnecessary, it's, it's, it could cause problems with the database maybe. Um, just get rid of it. Um, tuning, so you've got a couple of tuning things for uh, Postgres and Apache. Um, just to make your, make your um, cluster run more smoothly. That's uh, not going to go into this too deeply. Um, so this is some of the Ansible that I use to do it. So um, hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, at the top I've got my two hosts. They're my uh, two formal, app formal application nodes. Uh, in my diagram I had three at the start. Uh, but I only have two. Uh, so if we just skip the first few because that's a scenario if you're using the installer. Hopefully you guys are all using the installer and not doing uh, things manually because the installer is really good and easy to use. Um, so there's an encryption key uh, variable and that will ensure that all my nodes have the same encryption key. Uh, and then you've got a new hash um, form and installer scenario answers. Uh, so this roughly translates to uh, if you're using the installer and you've got hyphen hyphen name hyphen uh, a variable name. So this translates. So if you look at the first one, um, that foreman and then foreman URL would translate to hyphen hyphen foreman hyphen foreman hyphen URL uh, on the installer. Uh, Storing this way in Ansible makes uh, the installer, uh, it knows when it needs to run and when it doesn't need to run. Otherwise it's really hard to work out. Uh, so there's lots of, lots of variables in there. Um, foreman URL is just set to my, my load balancing address because I don't want that default into the FQDN. Uh, server name is using Apache and the vhost config. Uh, admin password, db host, that's my db cluster, my database cluster, um, various database passwords, <coughs> usernames. Um, OAuth key, OAuth secret, they used to be the same on all the nodes. Um, Foreman proxy, or the smart proxy, they use uh, OAuth to authenticate to Foreman. So uh, again, if, 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 if each node has them differently, um, the prom proxy is only going to be able to authenticate to one or maybe two. So make sure that that, that rail that, that is the same on all your nodes. Um, Puppet, uh, DNS alt names. I use Puppet to generate certificates, so I like to set that. Uh, if, you're, if you've got certificates coming from an external CA, uh, you could, you could, don't worry about that. Um, form a memcache plugin, so that configures a memcache. Uh, I've pointed it to my memcache hosts. Uh, I've set a namespace and it expires. Um, yeah, I've installed memcache on my application nodes as well. You don't have to. Uh, I did. Just made it easier. Um, some of you may notice the, the thing that's missing on that one. Uh, I mentioned before about uh, there's a file. Uh, yeah, local secret token .rb. Uh, that file isn't in that Ansible role, but um, I'm going to do that in future. So I, I migrate that manually, but don't do that. Um, so this is my this is my smart proxy cluster, similar sort of thing. So I've got an installer scenario. That scenario doesn't actually exist. I wrote it myself. It's just like one file, really simple to do. Uh, hopefully, future versions will have a uh, smart proxy scenario in. Um, again, answers again. So um, foreman hyphen proxy hyphen foreman hyphen base hyphen URL. If you're using the installer manually, um, I'm going to set that to my foreman cluster, which is going to be the load balancer, uh, trusted host. So uh, I've probably got a bit overkill there, uh, but I'm set to trust uh, all of the smart proxies in, in its cluster and uh, the former nodes that I have. Uh, you shouldn't need to trust the other smart other um, smart proxies. So, for example, um, smart proxy two wouldn't be needed on smart proxy one, but this made it simple. Same config, nice easy. 
OAuth consumer key and OAuth consumer secret. Uh, that's going to be the same that I had on the previous slide uh, to match. So that's how it uses to authenticate. Uh, SSL sir, SSL key, S SSL CA. Uh, they're the certificates that you run um, if you're using a, if you're using a uh, your own CA. Obviously, they're not they're not you're not going to get them from here. But uh, I using self signed certificates. Um, so uh, the yeah. So when you run that command, the the puppet search generates on the one of the one of the foreman nodes. Uh, you'll get given certificates, and they're the certificates you got pass in there. Um, template URL uh, again um, defaults to FQDN. You want it to use the load balancer at the bottom, so that's that's for the, that's uh, for the clients. Um, foreman yeah, foreman URL obviously that's going to be my the load balancing address. Um, uh, server cert name. Uh, you don't have to set that; it's just the name. Um, but I like to make it the name, uh, the the load balancing address, and I've got the. Uh, Got the two nodes behind that, uh, and the DNS op names again. Um, yeah. um, so I'll, I'll talk to you about the future in a minute. But um, does anyone want to see a demo? I can like shut down my nodes and uh, see what happens. Uh, can you see that? So this is my, um, so truth be told, I haven't got a load balancer on this machine. Um, I'm using a very primitive uh, source of load balancing, which is host files to direct which node I go to. Uh, obviously, you're not going to do that. Um, so here, uh, I'm hitting <coughs> So it's this one here, so it's 29, uh, which is node 1. Uh, you can see here that I can kind of go here. I can do stuff. I'm logged in. Um, I can go around the UI. Um, as a user, um, if then my foreman one you know, dies, uh, I'm just going to stop Apache. In fact, I don't actually really need to do that because I can just if it is. So, if that node dies, it gets taken out of the pool by the load balancer. Um, I'm now pointed to the new node, uh, and you can see here uh, it doesn't work. Brilliant. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, there you go. Um, don't know. I didn't change anything. Hopefully, you guys saw. Uh, but it's a bit of delay there. Uh, but you can see that my, my session is still valid. I don't have to log in again. Uh, my cookies are valid. Uh, to the user, hopefully, if you're using a low balancer, uh, that would be seamless. And I'm just going to show you from the clients as well. Um, Sorry about this. So you can see in this on the client, puppet configured. Um, 
server and, and also the CA server is that one at that address. So it hasn't got one or two in, it's the load balancing address. Um, if you look at the host file, uh, that's free, which is uh, smart proxy 2. So if we then let's run that provision, uh, yes. um, hopefully it'll connect quite nicely. Um, I think it might make some uh, NTP changes actually. Uh, yeah, so it's cast, it's it's start the NTP service. Um, but again, nothing will happen if we go to if we change that now to. So now I'm going to point that to uh, Smart Proxy 1, just change the IP, uh, Puppet Agent 1 is T, nothing's going to change again, um, hopefully, but to prove that I have got the same catalogue, um, if I, for example, if I stop uh, NTP, uh, and we get the catalogue, we should, we should restart NTP, because uh, Smart proxy should then talk to Foreman and get uh, data from the, from the ENC. Um, both, whatever you hit, it's the same. Uh, again, if the, if the uh, C, in this scenario, if the CA server goes down, you can't deploy new certificates. You can't, sorry, sign new certificates. So you can't deploy servers. Um, but it's, it helps with uh, HA, obviously. Um, if you don't care about that, that part of it. So in the future, uh, we want kind of provisioning. Um, I would like to see provisioning done. Uh, so DHCP, the default GCP daemon that we use, uh, does support a kind of secondary and uh, primary server. I would like to see uh, us be able to kind of provision in a highly available manner. So um, formal we configure DHCP and on both nodes. Uh, so both of these, both of the uh, smart proxies, could re respond to the DHCP and receive any DHCP requests that are given. Uh, again, TFTP could be quite simple. Uh, Foreman would just need to just need to know that uh, these smart proxies here are in a cluster. Uh, that's not currently possible within Foreman. Uh, so they'll need to know, Foreman needs to know that. So when you deploy a new host, it can uh, copy those uh, any files that you're going to serve over TFTP to both nodes and not just the one that you're, it, you, it knows things it's going to use. Uh, discovery, I think they need to, like, small changes in there. Um, if you guys use Discovery, uh, there may be kind of dragons with other plugins, but I think on the whole, um, it should kind of mostly work. Uh, and then Catello, I don't know if you guys use Catello. Um, we need to kind of move that to use uh, split deployment recording. So uh, Catello is made up of multiple components. So you've got Pulp, you've got the formal application, you've got Candlepin, um, you've got Cupid. There's, there's, there's like five or six different components. Uh, being able to split those out into different nodes and then make those nodes independently highly available would be really nice. Um, also, super cool if you want to start using containers and containerize in form and Orcatello. Um, I think kind of HA and containers are kind of a must, really. Um, yeah. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes, you can do that as well. Um, yeah, yeah, they are quite good. Yeah, um, yeah, you can do that as well. Uh, that's one of the nice features. Uh, probably that would be better than directly uh, kind of getting Ansible to call Puppet, which is a bit kind of weird. Um, yeah, that's a super nice thing. Um, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is about upgrades. Um, so, uh, not related really to your question, uh, but. Uh, when you upgrade, you can upgrade, hopefully upgrade one node. If you can upgrade one node and then uh, run the DB rake on, on, so if you've got three nodes, you, you upgrade one, to, so the UI is now one, uh, to, the, to version two or whatever the version is. Um, you run D, you run upgrade to the secondary node. Um, that will upgrade the UI and it will run the DB rake, seed, um, migrate. Um, you've now then got two nodes in your cluster, though, the new version and the database of the new version. Uh, and then you just have to upgrade the third one. So if you can do that nicely and uh, time taking the nodes in and out of the load balancer um, well, you can get almost close to zero time, zero downtime when you do upgrades. Um, 
but definitely yeah, Fulmer's a lot, yeah. The only thing is obviously you have to have, have another Puppet Master, which some people might not, might not want. So, yeah. was about Puppet CA and highly, making that highly available. Um, so I think initially it's, uh, it's kind of low on the requirements, if you like. Uh, it, people mostly care about being able to configure systems uh, than they do about deploying new systems. Uh, HA. Definitely, if you're going to start doing provisioning, uh, being able to make that HA is probably going to be needed. Um, but it's not something, it needs to be solved within the Puppet community, I think. Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing it, um, like I did mention, but it depends on scale, it depends on what you're doing. Um, it's, there's a lot more choices there, I think. I don't know if there's necessarily a particularly right way to do it, or a wrong way. Yeah. Um, probably not, no, not initially. Um, I would like to see it done, I just, I just, I just haven't got the expertise to do it. So. simple, so the installers um, all configure SSL for you. So, the, sorry guys, the question was about SSL, why not to configure, uh, why not to terminate it at the low balances. Um, the main reason for that is for simplicity. Um, I would have to go in and work out, uh, I'd get my certificates, put them at low balance, obviously that's quite simple, um, but the installer supports uh, passing in your SSL certificates, so that was just as easy for me. Um, I think you probably could do it. It would complicate things, uh, especially with Puppet, uh, because on the form of proxy you have two different uh, SSL certificates. You've got Puppet certificates, and you've got the form of proxy certificates. Um, it just kind of adds another thing. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily wrong. Does everyone understand the demo? Because I don't know if it was quite. I don't know. 